For any aspiring young racing driver, the idea of living in a world of high-octane fuel, sleek 700 horsepower machines and fat endorsement contracts has some allure. Deep down, they all nurture dreams of being like Michael, Alain or Ayrton. My dreams at the moment is to just to make Formula 1, I think. If you can make Formula 1 and be in there for a few years, that's a massive achievement as it is. Dreams are one thing, reality is another. And the reality here is that very few drivers have made it and very few will. So why is it so? Don't we have the talented drivers in Australia? Yeah, plenty. I mean, that's the frustrating part about it. I've seen them in the past, I've seen them now, and there'll be some in the future. This country has an enormous pool of uh, really good young drivers. I'd be absolutely confident that Australia has produced probably 10 guys capable of driving in Formula One, easily. Touring car driver Mark Scaife is one who nurtured dreams of Formula One, and many believe he had the talent. His preparation was right. Go-karts, Formula Ford, Formula Holden, and finally, Formula 3000 in Europe. But the thing that stopped him was money. If you want to go all the way, you have to have financial support. It comes down to what sort of money they can raise to keep on graduating. So from karts and Formula Ford are comparatively low money levels. And when you get to the next category, like Formula 3, then Formula 3000, and then Formula 1, just keep on adding zeros, because that's what it's like. Last year, Russell Ingle joined the Australian touring car scene in a dramatic way, winning the Bathurst 1000 with Larry Perkins. But it only came after he'd spent five years in Britain driving Formula Ford and Formula 3, trying to get into Formula 1. Although he impressed and won many races, he could never make the final step. The problem again, money. Formula 3 was my glass ceiling, so to, so called. Um, I could get to that level, but to get to 3,000 in Formula 1, you really have to do your year of three, Formula 3,000, and that's like £350,000. A subsidised drive, maybe £200,000. That's still 400000 Australian. It's a lot of money, and uh, it's hard work getting it. At 32, Russell Ingle may be too old now to attract interest in the ultimate category, but his touring car colleague, Craig Lowndes, is a different story. Now driving so well for the Holden dealer team, the young Lowndes has already been to England four times trying to break in. At 21, he has the time, but most importantly, Holden's team owner is Tom Walkinshaw, who has major interest in both the Benetton and Ligier Formula One teams. He's been watching over his young driver with an eye to the future. It's, uh, it's still on the, on the cards. Um, I'm always trying to do a deal um, to do it, and, and this, is, this is my way of driving the touring cars. Um, with, with company, with TWL, Tom Walkinshaw, uh, Mobile and Bridgestone. Um, hopefully, within that sort of um, sponsors, I can get overseas. 19-year-old Mark Webber is another hopeful. He'll be racing for the Van Diemen Formula Ford team this year in Britain. A drive he hopes will help open doors. We've got all the right ingredients at, at this stage, and it's important to keep these ingredients and getting the contacts going in the right country, which is England. And over the next few years, I think we can build on that and a lot of corporate support, obviously, from Yellow Pages and a few others, which hopefully we can bring on board over the next few years and give them value and hopefully all the way to Formula One. <laughs> Another driver many talk about going all the way is 15-year-old James Courtney, who last year won the World Karting Championship in Portugal. He didn't just win that event, he absolutely walloped them. And remember, most of the kids that were there have probably all seen that circuit before, and this is the first time James has ever left Australia. Courtney now has a factory drive with the European Tony Kart team, but it's his family who are doing all the funding, paying for repeated trips to Europe while young James carries on his schooling here. Alan Jones is one who feels drivers like Courtney provide great opportunities for corporate Australia, just like young Ayrton Senna did many years ago in Brazil. When he went to England and started racing Formula Ford, Formula 3, he had Bank Nationale on, 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 on across his overalls. And he actually kept that badge right through into his Formula 1 career. And the, the, the growth of that bank, along with Ayrton, doubled, quadrupled in size. So anyone that gets behind a young Australian now does get the kudos of what they're doing for him in his early stages. But if he does make it to the big time, you know, they're right there with him. The young Australians all do the rounds trying to attract interest and support for their campaigns. But few Australian companies see value in backing their efforts. The harsh reality, they're told, is the companies see little return for their investment, unlike corporate Brazil. There wouldn't be enough fingers on my hands to name the Brazilian drivers that have gone over to Europe with backing from Brazilian companies that are now in international motorsport. And here we are, we have a round of the World Championship for Formula One here at Albert Park 
we have a round of the IndyCar racing on the Gold Coast, and there's not one Australian on the grid, and I think that's a shocking shame. Yeah, well, AJ's always told it like it is, and uh, it is, it is sad. You've mentioned it many, many times. Yep. Well, I think it can be done, ironically, because Australia used to be a domestic country with companies and corporations that only sold to Australians. Now, because the world is big and communications is wide, they've got to go out of their own country to sell. If they're going to do that, they can use their sportsmen, particularly the racing drivers, to go out there and wave a flag. And they have to do that. If, they, if you want to see Australians participate in World Championship motor racing, you've got to pay for it. It's, it's, it's the business sector of Australia that's going to do it. You can't depend on the government. You can depend on associations or motorsport organisations. It's got to be from a commercial point of view and it will benefit Australia.